Hello and welcome to my channel on human design. For those of you that are new to the channel, um, I produce a lot of original content uh, about human design. I've been in it for more than 25 years and trained professional analysts for 20 of those years. So I get to see the mechanics playing out, the experience of doing countless readings and countless groups, being able to see the results of what the mechanics are in us. Today, I want to look at what I refer to as the clinging trap, and I'm going to go into describing what that is in, in the mechanics. It's basically part of the stream of feelings. If you want to know if you've got anything in the abstract circuit, here's a diagram of it. So have a look at your chart. If you uh, don't know your chart very well, then you can download a free report. Um, of about 50 pages in the descriptions below. So what do I mean by the clinging trap? The clinging trap is tied to desire. And desire can be seen in the hexagram of um, the 30th gate. The nature of desire can be seen in the hexagram. If you look at the hexagram of the 30th gate, You'll find you've got a yang line and then a yin line and then a yang line, then another yang line, then another yin line, and finally a yang line at the top. It is something that is full of feeling. And I want to talk about it today because I want to point out a hidden danger of desire um, tied to this stream of feelings that many people get caught into. And it's promoted everywhere to catch you in that trap and what is the trap it is the trap of fantasy so think about it the 4130 is a channel that reflects the other side of the root system in the 5818 and the 5818 we describe as being someone who is insatiable so there is a certain mirror of that in this channel and the 4130, the channel of recognition. You know, you have to really feel what it is that you're feeling to zero in on the one thing that's burning in you that you really want to do. Now, this channel can really become a trap because if you think about it, what is it? It's adrenalized emotions feeling and it's feeling in a in a circular way it's feeling it's a cyclic system the rise of expectation the fall of disappointment the rise of expectation and what is it designed to do it's designed for you to feel it so much and to zero in on the one thing that you want to do that you want to experience because it's an experiential stream that you're going to jump into it to actually take action, to go to the 36th gate and move towards progress in the 35th gate by experiencing it through the experience. That's the human experiential way. But if you take away the 36 and you take away the 35, what are you left with? You're left with this desire that burns in you and what are you going to do about it what do you do with it what do people do with it well that intense feeling is magnified and fed to you through those corporations that want to make money off you how do they do that they do that with the lotteries you know, they do that with the competitions where you think, oh, I want to live in a really big, gorgeous house in a perfect location. So they give you that photograph. They say you can win it, you know, and you think, well, I got to be in it to win it. So, yeah, I'm going to put in my ten dollars or whatever it is and have a go. You never know. Well, if you see the queues of people buying lottery tickets all around the world, you know the odds are stacked against you. It makes no logical sense. But the emotions don't care about the lack of logic. It's, it's, a, it's an energy. It's a feeling energy. It's a nervousness that's moving through you. It's not interested in, 
in logical progression. It's not interested in sensible thinking. It doesn't care. It just feels. Now, this hidden danger that I keep referring to, I want you to think about what happens. People go into a competition or they go and buy their lottery ticket, you know, and they don't win. And there's this crash of feeling, ah, oh, I didn't win it. But next time, next time I might, I might. This, this hope that is there to achieve something that can be given to you like a dream. It's a dream. It's part of a trap where you get caught in the dream. And though it's not repetitive in the way that logic is, it is something where you can get caught in the fantasy and caught in the enchantment of that, caught into the hope that it will be in your life, whatever it is, whatever the competition is. And you should also bear in mind that when they put out these competitions for these really big prizes, they're not just putting that prize in your competition. You know, many times they're putting the same prize in other competitions for other products to increase the um, the number of people that are going to pay money to be part of the competition or they're collecting data from you or whatever it may be. Well, both, actually. So it's not all that it appears to be like a dream, first of all. So I see it as a kind of a loop. If you're thinking about the abstract circuit as a spiral, you know, the, the, the rise and the fall and the rise and the fall, you can get caught in a loop. Now, it's the feeling of the hunger for something different. The feeling, the intense adrenalized feeling you know, if you feel that, if you if you focus that desire on something that you really want, it will take place in terms of action to move up towards the 35th gate. If your action is simply going down to the to buy a lottery ticket, you know, you're lining up along with a lot of other people that are doing the same thing. It just doesn't work the chances of disappointment are absolutely huge. And yet you're caught in the loop. You have another go. You have another go. The media will feed you fantasy after fantasy. And you could say to me, well, Richard, you know, it's just part of life. You know, we want to have a go. And I go, yeah, okay. But what is the hidden danger? And the hidden danger, the very real danger the probability of you falling into this is high if you get caught into this loop is that you're going to lose your life because you are going to lose your time and your time is taken up looking at this and that and fantasizing about it but not really feeling it to the intensity where you will take action where you will manifest something in your life through that buildup of hunger for something new. But you get these little buzzes and it just keeps you in the loop. It keeps you in the loop. It keeps you in the loop. And years go by and time goes by and you lose time. It's ironic, isn't it? The one thing there to, to pressurize us to action, to live our life fully, is also when you get caught in the loop, the very thing that will take that life away from you by stealing your time. And one disappointment after another, after another, after another, you know, continues to um, denigrate the energy of the life force. So I hope you found that useful. I want you to think about it. You know, see what you've got in the abstract circuit. You don't have to have the 30th gate. You don't have to have the full channel. Anything in the abstract circuit can contain the potential for this looping and this loss of time and this loss of life. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you did, please like and share and please subscribe. I'm trying to build up my subscription. That would be very helpful. 
and I will see you again very soon with something completely different. Bye for now.